Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here with RC Driver, your spot for radio control, car reviews, projects, how-tos, and so much more. And lately we've been getting a lot of new subscribers. So thank you to everyone hitting that subscribe button. And along with new subscribers means more comments and more messages. And uh, I noticed, you know, after reading some, you know, I try to read as many as I can, but you guys really like our reviews, but you're looking for something more affordable. So you know what? I listened and I set out to find some more affordable stuff to review for you guys. And that's when I thought of Red Cat Race because I remember their slogan, fast, affordable, fun. And I'm like, you know what? That seems like what the guys want, so that's what I'm going to try to get. And after having a great time with the Red Cat Racing Gen 8 Scout, I'm like, you know, this has got to be a good fit. So I reached out to the guys at Red Cat and asked for a vehicle to review. And actually, they sent a number of vehicles for us to review. So you're going to see a lot more Red Cat on the channel coming up very soon. And I thought I would start off with this one right here. This is the Volcano EPX Pro. This is a ready-to-run monster truck, electric monster truck, four-wheel drive. It comes with a LiPo battery and a charger, and it's $249. I think that fits the bill, right? So why don't we go over to the bench here. I'll pop open the box and show you everything that it comes with. So I've gone ahead here and unboxed everything that comes with the Volcano EPX Pro Kit. And this is a pretty complete setup here. The only thing you're going to need is four AA batteries for the radio system. We'll go over that in a second, but I wanna start off with the instruction manual. Obviously, you're going to want to read through this. This gives you all the details you need to know in order to get the truck up and running. And they even give you some information about the parts in case you need some spares. Now, they also give you a separate instruction sheet for the radio system and electronic system here. So definitely read through that stuff but this is what i thought was pretty cool this is a little flyer here for all of the option parts that you could get for this vehicle and uh, i think that's pretty neat i already see some things on here that i want to get for this truck all right now let's go over the radio system the radio system is the rcr 2 ce and this is a very cool radio uh, for entry level radio i really like the way this radio feels it has all the basic trims that you're going to need here your steering trim throttle trim uh, even the dual rate for the steering and then there's your on off switch your reversing switches and stuff like that so it is a neat little radio it works really well i really like the rubber grip on this one all right now over here this is the hex fly charger that comes with it and this is the uh the power cord for it but this is great because this is a balanced charger. Now, it does take a bit longer to balance charge a battery, but this is a safe way to charge a LiPo. And as you can see, it does one through three cells, so it's a neat charger to actually always have on hand. So this gets you up and going, and uh, will charge the battery that comes with the truck that I'm gonna show you in just a little bit. Now, here's a few more details that I wanna show you guys. It does come with this adapter plug. Now, this adapter is a Dean's to this uh, encased bullet style here. I forget the name of that one, but. Uh, I don't really use it that often, but what's cool is the uh, speed controller is fitted with a Dean's plug So if you do want to get additional batteries for that you could use that Dean's plug Now these are some shock preload clips and these are just for adjusting the ride height of your vehicle And then this is the little accessory bag for the radio system uh, Basically an antenna and a bind plug there And now we have the assembled truck that we're going to go and talk about over at the regular workbench so the Red Cat Volcano isn't exactly a new vehicle to the RC market. In fact, I think it's several years old. And from what I could tell, there may be only a few tweaks to it over the years. I think more in the electronics package. Uh, but you know what? It is new to the channel. It is it is new to me. I've never had one before. So I'm going to go over it just like I would any other vehicle you see here on the channel. And let's start off with the body on it. And you know what? It's just kind of this generic truck looking body, kind of bulbous in the front. Uh, you know, they had some neat graphic stuff going on, but there's a, a lot. It's very busy. And, uh, you know, overall, it looks pretty good. It's going to do the job. Uh, you know, not my favorite plastic for an RC body. Sometimes this will crease and stuff. Uh, but, you know, what? again, it gets the job done. And, you know, I think some people do like the way it looks. Now, onto the truck itself. It's a pretty neat setup for a four-wheel drive uh, monster truck. Really basic looking. Let's start off with the front bumper. And it's got this, you know, basic impact front bumper here. Uh, kind of just juts up pretty far because of, you know, the, the off-road wheels on this thing. And what really catches my eye is the dual aluminum shocks on each arm. I think that is pretty cool. They're threaded, they're oil-filled, and they seem to work pretty well. The front is, you know, pretty plush. The rear seems a bit firm, but we'll see how that pans out when we are running the truck. Now, 
what also catches my eye is, you know, adjustable tie rods all the way around on this thing. Usually we see fixed links on an entry level truck. Now the only thing about the tie rods is there is a pretty sharp angle from the adjuster nut down to the threads. And usually when I see that, that means it may break. So we'll see how that pans out as well. But uh, the arms on here are pretty flexible. So, you know, when you're tumbling, hopefully there's flex instead of breakage. What I also like on here is there are aluminum hinge pin braces. That's pretty neat to see on an entry level truck as well. Now, a lot of other composite plastics used throughout here. Uh, the front and rear suspension is pretty much the same. So we've got a composite shock tower in the front and one in the rear as well. The arms are interchangeable front and rear. So that's pretty neat. Now the hubs and steering knuckles and caster blocks on the outside of the front and rear, you know, they all look pretty well braced. They, they look like they have enough plastic there to be pretty durable. So I like the way it looks. Uh, what I also really like on this are steel dog bones, steel axles, and steel out drives. I think that is pretty neat in this price point as well. Usually we see some sort of, you know, telescoping plastic universal or something, uh, but they're metal here. That is pretty trick. What is also neat is the differentials are all metal as well. So we've got a metal ring and pinion, and we've got metal spider gears inside of the diffs. They are grease filled diffs, uh, but everything's supported by ball bearings. Very cool as well. Now in the center to drive the power from the spur gear, which is also metal, and the pinion gear is also metal, is an aluminum drive shaft. Pretty cool with steel out drives front and rear to those metal bevel pinions inside of the gearbox. So pretty neat stuff going on. I like the way, you know, everything looks, you know, again, it's an older platform, but you know, it is a great entry level platform. I think the person getting into RC would really like a lot of the features on this truck. Uh, the chassis, the main chassis is composite. There is some bracing, you know, underneath the bottom to make the structure a bit more rigid. And then of course, up top here, we have this neat blue aluminum uh, top plate. Very cool stuff. Uh, up front in the steering here, we've got a dual bell crank steering setup with an adjustable servo saver on there. And uh, why don't we get into electronics now? So this is a high torque servo, a standard servo, not a metal geared servo, but uh, you know, should get the wheels turned just fine. Uh, here we have the Red Cat receiver, and I'm not sure if that is waterproof. Now, the electronics in here are waterproof, uh, which is what it says on the box, uh, but I'm not, I didn't see anything that the receiver was. So if you know, and, and you know, please feel free to correct me in the comments, uh, I would just be aware of that. And uh, you know, if you're going out to drive in the mud and, and water and stuff, uh, but the servo is, the uh, speed controller is, and the motor is. And let me talk about the speed controller. It is a Hobbywing based speed controller. So that is very cool. 60 amp brushless motor speed controller comes fitted with a T plug on there. And then moving back to the motor, it is a sensorless motor, uh, 3300 KV. So should give you plenty of power. Now, what is also cool, and I've mentioned this before, is it does come with a LiPo battery, a 3500 milliamp pack. So that should give you some decent runtime. And it is a 2S pack, so, you know, power should be there for those people that are getting into it, learning how to drive and such. So this is a pretty neat setup. As I mentioned, you know, metal spur gear, there is actually a metal motor plate as well, pretty neat stuff going on throughout this kit. And uh, you know, for the price point, it is a pretty cool truck altogether. Uh, the tires on here have a nice tall lug to it. So it's an all terrain tire, you know, perfect for, you know, grass and, and dirt and driving around and gravel and such. Uh, the rims on here, very cool looking spoke black wheel on it. Gives it a pretty good look overall. A 12 millimeter hex if you do want to go out and swap out wheels later. But the way everything is set up, I, I really think it's great for that entry level buyer. Maybe somebody, you know, looking to get a second car maybe after they got a an entry level toy or a you know an 18 scale or something like that getting into the hobby and they want to progress to the next level i think this is really it they have a brushed version as well so if you're looking for something a little bit slower you might want to check that out but i think a lot of people once you know about brushless you're going to want a brushless system and this truck has one that should give you great powers so all that's left is to go outside and give this thing a good bash testing i'm going to go find a perfect spot go thrash around and see what the volcano can do
All right, it's that time in the review where I talk to you about the performance and my final thoughts of the vehicle. And I'm not sure exactly where to start on this one because I've got uh, some stuff to talk to you guys about. And uh, I'll just get started with uh, my experience on it. And uh, well, when I first turned it on and started to, you know, apply throttle to this thing, um, it just kind of cogged. And it was really weird. The, the speed controller motor combination was cogging and it was kind of jittering and stuff like that. And once I'd get past half throttle, it would finally start to take off, which, uh, okay, that was great. Uh, and then after about two minutes of driving, the truck just stopped and wasn't working anymore. Uh, the steering was working and it seemed like power was getting to the speed controller, but it just wasn't going forward anymore. So I actually came back home here to the workshop and, uh, you know, fiddled with things for a little bit and wound up rebinding the transmitter for some reason. And then once I did that, everything worked perfectly and so I don't know what the hiccup was there but um, you know I tell you guys everything that I experienced and that was a bit odd and I've never had that before where I had to rebind a radio system to get the throttle to work right but once I did that it was great the, the throttle was nice and smooth on this and uh, it was actually a lot of fun there is a little bit of bottom end lag and I think that's from the way it's geared so once you do pull the throttle it takes a little bit to kind of ramp up to speed but once this thing hits throttle I mean you know gets past that initial kind of lag this thing is incredibly fast for a truck on 2S and I was really pleased with the speed of this truck. It is fast. It is just so cool to drive, especially if you're ripping across like flat dirt or, or, or a flat field or something like that. It's, it's really cool to see how fast this thing goes. So I like the speed on this truck. Now onto uh, the steering of it. It actually steers really well too. It's a nice neutral steering. Uh, actually has some pretty good steering on power and then off power it, get, it turns a bit tighter and you kind of have to watch out because of the lug on the tire and a little bit of the handling and, and depending on your speed you can roll this thing over pretty easily if you crank the wheel too much so uh, just be a little aware of that but I was actually surprised with how it steered for a basher truck in this price point. Uh, now on to handling it actually handles pretty well too uh, you know soaks up some of the bumps and, and jumps and stuff like that uh, I did a lot of just kind of mild jumping with it and uh, you know just based on the looks of the vehicle and the components and stuff you know I didn't think this was a big air machine so I didn't go and air it out uh, so I just found some mild jumps to go over at the BMX track uh, out in my backyard with some plastic BMX ramps and stuff and it jumped just fine with that uh, if anything you have to be very careful with the throttle because if you pull too much throttle this thing just flips over backwards so easily um, so as soon as you hit the ramp of, of the jump let off the throttle and this thing flies nice and flat through the air and lands pretty well for the most part and I did tumble it a couple of times uh, but you know it, uh, it it jumps pretty well now the only thing is and I kind of mentioned this uh, earlier on when I was looking over the vehicle talking to you guys about it was the rear kind of just binds up and I, I think I figured out what it was once the suspension starts to compress, the dog bones are actually, I think, too long. And they start to bottom out into the axle cup and into the out drive. And uh, you, you could just see it. You just push the arm up and you can't move that dog bone side to side. So that means it's bottoming out. And I think that's what's stopping the suspension from gaining, you know, from having its full travel. Uh, so the downside of that is you could possibly bend a dog bone and what I'm noticing here is some more slop into in the hubs and in the steering knuckles out front because I think basically it's just getting slammed and uh, kind of causing things to wear a little bit there so I, I want to point that out to you guys that the, you know there's a, there's a little design issue there but other than that, you know, this was actually a really fun truck. And I would really suggest, you know, if you're getting this truck, you just kind of keep it as a backyard basher type of thing. Not huge air, lots of speed runs and stuff like that, ripping figure eights, donuts and all that type of stuff. It's totally cool for that, but I kind of steer clear of the big air type of stuff because of that axle issue. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it ran flawlessly. I thought maybe I'd break a tie rod or something like that, but I had some nasty tumbles with this uh, at the BMX track. 
and uh, the tie rods didn't break or anything else for that matter. And in fact, I kind of cartwheeled down the starting hill at the BMX track and I thought I was just going to go collect parts and nothing happened. So it wound up being pretty durable for, for me. And, uh, you know, I kind of went into this uh, with a little bit of Red Cat history back when I worked in the hobby shop. I remember repairing, you know, a, a number of Red Cat engines. So I was, I was like, you know, what am I in for? But I was actually really pleasantly surprised and happy with the performance of the Red Cat Volcano. And since we're going to be reviewing more Red Cat stuff here on the channel, I've kind of had my eye on them and watching groups and stuff like that. And uh, it seems like they're really taking care of their customers. So I like this direction of Red Cat. You know, they have a new president getting things going over there. And I think we're going to see a lot of changes from Red Cat and things are just going to get better and better. So I'm excited to check out everything that they have. We're going to continue to do more Red Cat stuff here. And if you want to see more Red Cat stuff, definitely let me know which vehicle in the comments section below. And who knows, maybe it'll be here on the channel really soon.